In Manhattan, there exists one block that contains two of the city's most important locations. The city block between 7th and 8th Avenues and 31st and 33rd Streets is the setting of a crucial battle for the space. Above ground is the Madison Square Garden, an iconic multi-purpose indoor stadium home to the New York Rangers and the New York Knicks. Built in 1968 at a price of $1.1 billion, the space also hosts concerts, boxing, MMA, and many other forms of sports and entertainment. It rapidly became, and still is, one of the most notable places in the Big Apple. But just under the garden is arguably the more important place of the two. One stair flight below, Ground level takes you to New York Penn Station, the busiest transportation facility in the Western Hemisphere. The 21-track, fully underground station is the main transport point for more than 600,000 passengers per weekday. It serves Amtrak, the U.S.'s trademark intercity rail service, as well as NJ Transit and Long Island Railroad, two crucial regional rail services which pass under the rivers to New Jersey and Long Island, respectively. In recent times, the station has received extremely poor ratings for its cleanliness, organization, and overall feeling. Many cite the station as a confusing, low-ceilinged catacomb and a depressing way to enter one of the biggest cities in the world. Progress has been made to bring Penn Station back above ground. The Moynihan Train Hall, which opened in 2020, was constructed to be an additional annex to Penn Station, reducing the stress on the main station concourses. Despite this, the old station areas still see heavy usage because NJ Transit is only accessible from the old area. Moynihan Train Hall does not have access to tracks 1 through 4, which are primary terminating platforms for New Jersey Transit. To put it all in one piece, the train hall is a fantastic addition, but more has to be done. The fight over above-ground control of the block was further intensified over the summer, when the New York City Planning Commission proposed a 10-year operating permit renewal to Madison Square Garden. This followed usual procedure, because a public space as large as the garden requires an operating permit to continue hosting events. The catch? A month later, the New York City City Council voted to reduce this to just five years, resulting in the garden's shortest ever operating permit. The City Council hoped to put pressure on the owners of the garden. They wanted to see that MSG could still operate in conjunction with the plan to redevelop Penn Station and bring it above ground. MSG's owners, however, weren't too pleased with this. The garden is owned by the Dolan family through the Madison Square Garden Entertainment Group. They claimed that politicians and government officials were unfairly pushing a landmark out of space. Furthermore, the Dolan family claimed that the station doesn't have the rights to the above ground space unless they were transferred, and so they couldn't just build on their property. Many news sources reported that if this were to continue to a legal battle, it would be one for the ages. The Dolan family owning MSG means it gives them the ability to get special tax exemptions and hefty government compensation, owing largely to the revenue the venue brings in, as well as the fact that it is the only sports venue in Manhattan, so it is the only thing keeping the Knicks and the Rangers in the heart of the city. The fight took a big turn in September, when a critical report was released citing the venue's lack of compatibility with the station. The MTA, owner of the city's subway, bus, bridge, and tunnel systems, as well as the LIRR, released a report with NJ Transit, a large stakeholder in the station, and Amtrak, the owner of the station, fueling the debate over the future of the arena. The report stated the incompatibility between the arena and the station, detailing numerous points of conflict between the facilities. The railroad agency stressed that the garden needs to agree to collaborate on property swaps to allow for an above-ground expansion of the station. The MSG responded in their own statement, citing their disappointment at the report. In that, the Dolan family claimed that if the permit was not renewed for a considerable amount of time, they, through the MSG company, would be permitted to raise the garden and build another structure above Penn Station on an as-of-right basis, meaning that as long as a developer complies within applicable zoning regulations, it can do whatever it wants, essentially. The list of solutions is long, drawn out, and not at all decided upon. While the MTA and the government technically have the reins in this process, Governor Hochul has admitted that they are not at all wed to a certain plan and are fully willing to hear options from other transit administrations or private groups. The property rights of this space are, to put it simply, crazy. 
Amtrak owns the station itself, while the MTA owns the subway lines, stations, and tunnels that surround it, namely the IND 8th Avenue line and the IRT 7th Avenue line that go on each side of the station. The Dolan family owns the MSG and its theater, including air rights. Vornado Realty Trust owns Two Penn Plaza, while LIRR and NJ Transit are big ticket tenants in the area. Last of all, New York City and the government control zoning and permitting in the area. The main solution released by Governor Hochul and the Empire State Development Corporation includes a full-scale redevelopment of the space in and around Penn Station. To keep the Dolan family happy and away from lawsuits, the garden would not move or be inhibited upon at all. Instead, the government would seek to purchase multiple blocks of land around the station to be demolished, before renovating and rebuilding the area. This would include multiple large buildings in a Penn Plaza style format, but also increase the capacity and size of New York Penn Station, adding platforms and space largely in anticipation of the Gateway Program tunnels. If you're more interested in the Gateway Program, please be sure to check out the video on my channel. The downsides to this project are that it would destroy a unique New York neighborhood in the Garment District, displace thousands of apartment dwellers and small business owners, and on top of all of that, New York Penn Station would still be largely stuck under Madison Square Garden. To combat this, a group of advocates came together and formed Rethink Penn Station NYC, a group advocating against the ESD's plan. Instead, Rethink Penn Station wants to bring back the glory of Penn Station, restoring it to its rightful place pre-World War II. Following the release of the incompatibility report from the railroads of Penn Station, the group promoted the idea of destroying and relocating the entire Madison Square Garden. This would allow for Penn Station to be brought fully above ground, taking up the entire block that it used to so many years ago. The design would largely be based off the original Penn Station that existed prior to the 1960s, invoking a rebuilt but modernized McKim, Mead, and White design. The station would include terraces, rooftop restaurants, and green spaces throughout the station. It would bring mass amounts of light and air to a station that has long been trapped underground, allowing it to breathe once again. Beyond the beauty, the station would also allow for a transformation of the rail system in New York. Currently, the station uses a terminal station style, where trains are forced to reverse through the station and treat it as a final stop. This increases dwell times and reduces the number of trains that can run through the station. For example, when Amtrak trains pass through the station as an intermediate stop, passengers usually line up 20 to 30 minutes prior to the time, and the train is often put on standby for a while. The train must wait for long amounts of time while passengers come down the long escalators and board the train. The amount of space between the tracks and main passenger areas is far too much for Penn Station to be a through-running station. Rethink Penn Station wants to turn it into a through-running station, a bi-directional station style that would allow trains to pass through Penn Station quicker. Think of it as turning New York Penn Station into a style like New Newark Penn Station, where all platforms are always accessible and it's easy to get to the platforms. This would reduce dwell times and not force trains to reverse direction, treating New York Penn Station as a terminal station. Two other projects have also been proposed in recent time, the first being an official proposal from the MTA that would see the Madison Square Garden enclosed in a glass square with the train hall surrounding it in an attempt to please both the Dolans and MSG as well as the millions of passengers that use Penn Station. Another project has been proposed by the Italian private company ASTM that would see a $6 billion stone-clad model with a grand 8th Avenue entrance for the station. This project has gained far more traction and would result in the demolition of the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden that clings to the underside of the arena. Fixing New York Penn Station is going to be no easy project. It is the result of decades of mistakes, funding failures, and a general lack of responsibility from those in charge. It's breathtakingly fresh to finally see concrete, real plans to replace and renovate Penn Station from top to bottom, a long-needed change. However, there's going to be snags that will be hit. Madison Square Garden is the elephant in the room. Removing it would make life easier for everyone pro-transport, but at the cost of lawsuits and financial challenges from the Dolan family. 
a multitude of different projects have been presented by private and public entities, all with the intent to remodel the busiest transportation hub in the United States. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and comment below which potential project entices you most, as well as which video ideas you'd like to see in the future. Thank you for watching.